What's going on guys, Brian's here. Today is Sunday, October 22nd, 2023. Now trading against the trend or taking a reversion to the mean trade is something that requires a little bit more experience or a little bit more delicacy versus trading in the direction of the trend, which is why when you first start out trading, you'll hear things like the trend is your friend or trade again, trade with the trend again instead of trading against it. But I want to let you guys know it doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be very difficult taking a counter trend trade. I love taking reversion to the mean trades. I also like taking contrarian trades, which is counter trending type of trades. And what I'm talking about here is the last few weeks of price action. So right here, we had a very strong trend to the upside and here we had a very strong trend to the downside. However, within these micro trends up, micro trend down, there were opportunities to take a reversion to the mean. If you're day trading, which is mostly what I'm talking about in this video, we're going to use VWAP as the mean. So VWAP is this light gray level that you see in the background of my chart right here. That's the only day trading indicator that's on almost all of my day trading charts and then we could ignore these additional levels that you see on the chart here for a second so those belong to the quant trading app script but if we're looking at VWAP and we see right here just taking Friday's price action we can see that there was a moment in which in which price action had a lot of bearish momentum to the downside it stalled out and then it reverted back to the mean which would be VWAP the same thing if we were to take a look at another day for example here's a strong trend in which the markets opened and then it took off and and then we had a little bit of a stalling out in the middle of the day before it reverted back to the mean, which is VWAP. I've noticed a lot of traders will try to take a counter trend trade just because they're at a support resistance level or they think that this is where the market should reverse because of some discretionary or some sort of bias that they are projecting into the market. One thing you have to understand is support and resistance levels are not proven until after the fact. So if you have a resistance level here, quote unquote, and you're thinking that the market is going to get rejected here later you don't know that this is resistance until it has already been rejected and that's something i learned from brian shannon he has expressed that before and ever since learning from him i started adapting that thought process that it is potential resistance or potential support and that's all it is it is an area of interest in which we are expecting something to happen but it does not have to happen at that level in this case here on monday we did end up getting a rejection but we can see here later in the week price did push a little bit higher before it reverted back to the mean there was a lot of strong bullish momentum on this day so keep that in mind just because you have a support and resistance level there it doesn't mean it's actually price is going to interact with it exactly the way in which you're expecting it to and that's just elementary technical analysis support and resistance and what to expect at these levels so say for example on friday we can see that the market is selling off and there's a lot of bearish momentum just because you might have a level on your chart that looks like this and you see the market comes down to it does not mean it has to bounce here just because you have some arbitrary level on your chart that's not the way in which the market works you want to wait for more clues you want to wait for price action to give you a reason to take that counter trending trade if we were to scroll over here to the uh, quant trading art discord this is something that I mentioned here on Friday. So at 10, we'll just round it and say 10.30 a.m. Eastern time. I said, I'm waiting for that first green 15 minute candle to close on the SPY before opening any long de delta positions. Let some big bulls show up first. Aggressive momentum is to the downside. A scout back up to VWAP is probable here, but I want to short some puts and I need to wait since more capital is at risk in doing so. So I like to run put credit spreads instead of just buying calls whenever the market is falling. And that's just because I don't also want to have a long delta position. I'm also looking to be short Vega, which is a short volatility position because when the market goes down, volatility tends to increase. And whenever it bounces, volatility tends to decrease so i'm looking to take advantage of this situation and in a sense get paid for two reasons one being long delta and the second reason having volatile volatility temporarily contract now the the simplest and most easiest clue if there's anything you can take away from this video is this wait for the first 15 minute candle to close there is no reason to get long here there's no reason to get long here there's no real reason to get long here there's no real reason to get long here once we see this first 15 minute candle close that's when i'm now becoming interested to take that counter trend 
trade. It doesn't always have to work out this way because there are different instances in which I might jump the gun a little bit earlier if I'm taking a micro scalp. But if I'm looking for a trade with high conviction, I want to see or I want there to be proof that there are actually buyers that are going to hold that level and aggressive buyers, people that are willing to actually put a lot of money behind support in this level. That's the conviction that's going to be required. And this is something I've expressed over the few years within Quant Trading Up Discord. I don't think I've talked that much about it on YouTube, which is why it sparked the interest for me to do this video. It's the same thing like back here. This was a day in which I know there was a few people that were shorting just because the SPY had hit this 435 level. But if you take a look at this and I did a couple private videos. I may, I'll probably release them or at least I'll link to them in the uh, YouTube in the description down below for this because I did a video on this day here. But here it goes. This is a lot of strong bullish momentum. Just because 435 is a key inflection point, it is an area of rich interest. It is a potential resistance level. We can see by the close, the market did end up closing right around 435 and just below it. So yes, by the close, which is an important price, the open high low close are all important. But when we look back, on candles especially if you're looking at a line chart it's the open and the close it's the open and it's the close sometimes the high and the low is ignored i pay attention to the high and the low but not everyone does there are a lot of traders out there especially swing traders that pay attention to the closing price because that's pretty important but what happens throughout the day is also important especially if you're obviously if you're a day trader so if you're looking to take a trade here and you're seeing strong bullish momentum strong bullish momentum strong bullish momentum yes it stalls out here but you can keep yourself out of trouble by saying hey i'm going to wait for that first red candle to close and if you know how to read price action you understand these types of candles these are called hanging mans we have hammer candles we have inverted hammer candles we have dojis we have names for all of these candles but most of them aren't relevant in terms of understanding what they're actually called what we can see here is this is our first red candle this is something you can teach to a five-year-old or anyone that understands colors so they're not colorblind we have two colors on our chart red and green if you're looking to take a counter trend trade and you see a stacking of the same color and you want to take a counter trend trade then wait and use a 15 minute time frame. Stop looking at micro time frames if you're struggling to trade those time frames. You'll often find that it's a little bit easier because you have a lot more time to think. You can wait the 15 minutes and then you can wait another 15 minutes to decide. Let price stall out for a bit because what we'll often find is it will take a little bit of time, especially after a strong opening drive play, especially after the first session of the day. If you want to divide the day into three sessions, we have the morning, we have the middle of the day, and then we have the afternoon. Here's the morning middle of the day and then we have the uh, afternoon and it's often broken down with power hour at the end of the day that last hour and the first hour of the day usually being the most volatile periods which means in the middle of the day you'll generally get less volatility so that's usually where a where a trend will start to cool off for a bit and this is where you can comfortably take some sort of a lower risk short because now at least you know you're shorting with the support of other people that are actually there as they've proven themselves and if you're wrong you can take a small stop because if the next candle was to close higher than this one then you don't want to be in the trade anymore and you're taking a small stop and you move on it shouldn't be something that should really affect you that much half the time when the market is trending i'll just wait for that and that clue in itself if there's any type of key level at that level in in case of last week 437 was the uh, gamma flip level for the spy so there was already a reason to look for a short trade there but this is where the proof came in so if we take a look at friday here we have the market is selling off selling off selling off and then we get our first green 15 minute candle close and if i decide to enter a long position here my target is going to be vwap because it's just the scalp back up to vwap that is the reversion to the mean it doesn't mean the market won't go lower because as we can see this next candle here was a little bit lower but at least there's enough faith entering within this 30 minute window right here between these two candles because i'm waiting for this one to close to see what will happen there will be instances in which that candle will close and then the next one will just shoot right up in that case you have to tell yourself what type of trader are you is that a trade that's really what adds to your PL at the end of every month if not then it's okay if it is then you have to come up with some other prerequisites for yourself for what are other clues in which you're going to use to enter after that first 15 minute candle closes that is counter trend that's for you for my playbook it doesn't matter if the next candle just shoots right up it just means it wasn't the trading which i was looking for i'm a very patient trader and i like to wait because i'm not taking a ton of trades throughout the day so i'd much rather wait for some sort of conviction behind what i'm looking for if we're taking a look at the volume profile additional reasons here 
here is the week to date volume profile for this week we can see here's the uh point of control for that week we can see all the high volume nodes in the background so you can have all your sorts of reasons to take the trade here is all this uh potential demands you have this uh point of control here let's take a look at the daily time frame we have the 200 day uh moving average which was also discussed within the discord i'm pretty sure anybody that's a trader is well aware of the 200 day moving average as long as you've been trading for at least over a year and you've taken some sort of basic technical analysis course you'll be aware of the 200 day moving average so there's multiple reasons to think we can just take a look at our chart we can see there's potentially all of this demand here all of these reasons compounding and it's telling you hey in this area is where you want to take a look for a short for a long trade because the market has sold off to this zone however where do you take your entry wait for that 15 minute candle to close and then consider getting into the trade one example of the type of trading which i'm interested in because i was looking to sell puts it's called a put credit spread or a bull put spread it just means i'm selling a put and then i'm buying a put a little bit further out and it's this is how much margin it's going to use this is how much credit is being received because i'm selling this put collecting in this case it was who knows it was probably if i remember correctly it was probably like ten dollars or fourteen dollars or something like that and then you're buying another one that's going to cost you so if you're selling this one for ten dollars and then you're buying this one for six bucks then you're collecting a credit of four dollars which is 400 bucks which are whatever is the difference the reason i prefer to do this is because it is a short vega trade which means if the market does not bounce all it has to do is just stall out around here also because it's also a long theta trade which means it's getting paid through the passage of time and the one thing we know the one thing that's always going to happen is time is going to pass as long as we live in this universe and to our understanding of physics knowledge and everything we understand time is constantly passing by and so we find out a way to you know jump forward in time go back forward in time or pause time to my knowledge i don't know how to do that and to my knowledge i don't think anyone knows how to do that so therefore i'm under the operation that time is going to pass by and that's why i'm going to want to run some sort of trade that's going to benefit from that because i don't need to be entirely right i don't need the market to actually bounce back up to vwap i just needed to just stop going lower as aggressively as it was and this is what that first clue is which is why for me here as I mentioned, I want to short some puts and I need to wait because I'm going to use more capital. If you're just buying a call, you can buy a really cheap call here. You can probably get something on the SPY for $1. And if it pops, you can probably sell it for $1.50. You can make 50 cents. That's a 50% return. There's that, there's that, you know, option also. But the problem with that is if the time, if the market is stalling out around here and a lot of time is passing by, especially if you're trading a zero DTE long call option, theta is going to be burning away if you're not right. And if the market just went a little bit lower, you could easily be down 40 30 sometimes even 50 percent within 30 minutes and that's a little too much risk for me i'd much rather short some puts and then and then open up some sort of a some sort of a bull put spread or a put credit spread or whichever you which whichever way you like to call it they're the same thing and then i'm just telling myself hey i just usually need about 60 minutes to sometimes 90 minutes sometimes you can get your reward within 30 minutes but i'm generally going to block out about 30 to 90 minutes for this trade to manifest itself and in this case here the screenshot was taken about two hours if i remember correctly so this is it opening right here this is 11 18 if we take a look at the charts right here this is eastern time again this is 11 15 so sometime within this candle here i'm shorting that put that's just a couple strikes out the money if we were to go to the spx let's see the put that was sold was the 4230 if we were to mark that on our charts right here we have 4230 so boom so pretty much right here shorting just about the at the money put and then i'm just saying hey as long as it's not really going to keep going with this much momentum and if it did take the stop loss a good profit target on something like this is about 50 percent received of the credit 25 percent is usually a great place you'll you'll more than likely hit a 25 percent return on the credit received if you wait about 30 minutes to an hour after waiting for that 15 minute candle to close after a strong trend i'm not talking about days in which the market just randomly puts in a 15 minute candle out of nowhere like this right here there's there's nothing here we're talking about the days in which we have these strong trends here's a strong trend here's a strong trend down here's a case in which this 15 minute candle close if you entered something like this you're taking a small stop loss so this is this is a loss in this case so not every time is it going to work out but there's not a strong enough trend here now if we talk about the entire day here's this trend all the way up to a level in which i had key reasons to think that this would be some sort of resistance now we have the rejection at a key level and that's something that's important when you first learn technical analysis is all about the context if you see a candle that's a doji candle something like this and I tell you, what do you think is going to happen next? And you have no idea of what's the prior information. You have no idea. Are we coming from a strong uptrend? 
do we think we're going to reverse here or are we coming from a strong downtrend then do we think we're going to reverse here without some sort of prior context you have no idea of doji candle in isolation doesn't mean anything all it's telling you is that both sides are confused that's what this candle is telling us it opened and closed at the same price it went a little higher it went a little lower but ultimately it opened here and, and, then, and then it closed here so it went nowhere there's very little information from that but if you can put together all the pieces you have a little bit more clues as to which we think will happen and in this case here a candle like this almost in the middle of nowhere after it, this isn't really that large of a move compared to let's take a look from here straight down to here that's a lot of bearish momentum in such a short period of time from here to here we're talking about a two and a two point twenty five percent drop in a case like this what about from here all the way straight up to here now we're talking about a 2.25 percent rally and again almost the same amount of time and it's rallying to this key strike last week and here we're rallying to this key infliction point here after such a sharp drop that's why i'm looking for some sort of counter trend trade and I generally don't think it's a great idea to always look for shorts in the S&P 500. In my opinion, it's a little bit easier to look for long trades, even during a bearish market. If you didn't know, the sharpest or the most aggressive rallies actually happen during bear markets. They happen when there's a lot of volatility. I like capitalizing on those opportunities. Lastly, just look for additional confluences. In this case here, this is a screenshot from the quant trading app option volume chart. These levels are plotted within the system and it's letting us know right here. This is what's referred to as the volume range. So it's letting us know from the options chart at least for the zero dt options on friday at this point in the day 422 there was showing there was really not much interest at that point in time on the volume profile for the options market no one was really aggressively bidding it lower at that point and then the same time we have right here this is the previous put block so this is letting us know from the previous day no one was really putting a lot of money behind thinking the market was going to go much lower from the previous day so this is something that's letting me know right here within this area i'm going to look for price to stall out and i'm thinking it's going to come right back up to vwap and that in a sense has worked out so hopefully this clarified the difference between why you can buy a call yes but if you buy a call you are opening up yourself to that risk risk of what happens if price just stalls out in this case here shorting a put means i can comfortably you know let the trade play itself out because time is actually on my side if we bounce that's a bonus if we don't bounce that's okay too i'll still end up hitting my profit target more than likely so i so i would recommend you guys look into spreads understand this type of information the core or the main purpose of this whole video is sometimes you just need to be a little bit more patient wait for a 15 minute candle to close then decide what you want to do on the next candle you'll have about 15 to 30 minutes sometimes to decide what you want to do it's a little bit less stressful day trading when you're waiting for signs like this and lastly wait for momentum this is not something you use when there's no momentum i'm not talking about days or weeks when the market is choppy like this we know there's going to be momentum after consolidation because after compression comes expansion after compression comes expansion uh, the trade in which i opened this this week was a strangle and i guess i can show that it's not really pertaining to this video but here we go so it's pretty simple for here uh this was the trade open up let's see when i first open it it was the uh, day before it was uh, the day before right here here we have it on the 18th power schedule talk tomorrow i'm running this 12 dte strangle this is a long vega trade i'm expecting volatility to compress I'm not sure which way the market is going to go so i'm buying a put and i'm buying a call profit target on something like this is going to be 25 percent and then 50 percent and this ended up working out pretty well so you can trade that extra dimension it's not always about you know if you think the market is going to go up or down sometimes i don't think the market is going to go nowhere sometimes i think the market is going to make a big move how did i think the market why did i think the market was going to make a big move because there was no way which i believe the market was going to continue compressing within this range here so i bought the call for out here and i bought the put for out here when the market was around here expecting it to go to one of these ranges and then more than likely break them so this was the put in which i was in right here and we can see we ended up breaking we went all the way down here and broke same thing here after compression i'm expecting expansion after compression i'm expecting expansion after a while this trend will die down and then the market will compress again and then after that compression will come another expansive period for the market Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully, this helps someone out there just keeping it pretty simple with this, slowing down your day trade, and sharing a different way of looking at the market as well as how you can execute on these trades with using something like a spread. It's called a credit spread. I highly encourage you to check out more of the other videos on YouTube. Take care.